consumer empowerment and social networks are changing the rules of business. And this change is accelerating. And as I said, our goal is to partner with you to stay ahead of this change. Um, the number one thing I hear from clients when I'm out doing visiting with them is that you want to get the benefit of the thousands and thousands of deployments we've done with our clients, the best practices that we've accumulated. So I want to suggest to you six specific things that you can do here at this conference and when you go back to your office that will help you move the ball down the field related to customer experience. These are very pragmatic things, most of which you can complete by the end of the year. So let me, let me go through this list with you, okay? I, I would encourage you, Jason showed you the conference guide. Uh, turn to page 18, he showed you a whole bunch of blank space there. There are pens on the table. I'm gonna give you six things to work on, okay? And these are really driven by the imperative of customer experience. So number one, go mobile. You need to support your customers on mobile devices. A mobile device, whether it's an iPad, iPhone, Android, whatever it happens to be, the next generation that hasn't come out yet, is different than a PC. It has a different footprint, and the stuff you did for a web browser on a PC does not fit on a, piece, on a, on a mobile device. You need to implement it. I, was, I see uh, Michelle's up here uh, from Match.com. She shared in New York at an event, 30% of their traffic is now coming through mobile devices. I was with a firm last week uh, in Tokyo, 90% of their traffic is coming over mobile devices. Uh, you may not be a believer here yet, but I would encourage you, on one of your action, a sub-item on this one, when you get back to your office, go see your webmaster. Ask him or her to pull a log from your website and tell you how much traffic to your website is coming from mobile devices. You will be shocked. Um, in fact, traffic from mobile devices is going to surpass traffic from internet browsers on PCs in 2013. In fact, the mobile devices are going to be the preferred internet access device, overtaking PCs as an access device. The things you've done in the PC environment don't fit. This is why we put such an emphasis on our mobile capabilities earlier this year. And I'm happy to say, you already own these capabilities from us. In fact, I, I heard last night, uh, another one of our great government customers, Social Security Administration, uh, they've already gone live with our mobile solution. Uh, it's not that hard. You build out the use cases, all the things you've done on the PC, web self-service, chat, incident submission, just reformat them for the mobile device. That's the first thing. Number two, get on Facebook. Uh, there are 500 million consumers. My guess is some of those 500 million consumers are your consumers, and they're out there on Facebook. You need to be there, and not just a marketing presence, not just a company web page. They're out there, they want support from Facebook. Uh, that's why we're really excited about the new Right Now CX for Facebook, which will be a generally available next month, that allows you to do all the things in your company Facebook presence that you're currently doing under your support link on your website. Um, this is very straightforward, it's self-service, it's crowd service, uh, agent assisted service, uh, your customers on Facebook, uh, you need to get there. I would encourage you to uh, implement this before the end of the year. Okay, number three. You need to be tweeting with your customers. They're out there talking. There's 65 million tweets a day. About 20% of those are related to brands and products. You need to be listening because they're talking about you and they're asking for help. Uh, Navy Federal Credit Union, a good client of ours back east, had an experience earlier this year where someone went to one of their cash ATMs, tried to get money out. For some reason, it was unsuccessful. Customer tweeted about it. Well, Cloud Monitor picked that up, routed it into the contact center. The agent tweeted back and offered assistance. They tweeted back and forth a couple times, resolved the issue, person got their cash. They took what was potentially a negative experience and turned it into one that actually built loyalty. These social networks are the new channel. It used to be we had call centers. We just took the answer the phone. Ten years ago, we started seeing email shows up. Well, 
Some companies went out and implemented email management solutions that were just silos, and then they realized that the people that send them email are the same ones that call them on the phone. Well, social's no different. We need to deliver a multi-channel desktop that integrates social. You need to socialize your contact center and figure out what that means in your particular environment. Um, so we have a bunch of sessions here. I would encourage you to learn more about this. Again, this cloud monitor is part of all your existing licenses. You need to turn it on. Um, number four, create community. Um, your customers work with you because they like your brand, they like your services, they like your products. Um, and a standard web page doesn't provide for engagement. It doesn't provide per for participation. This is what forums capabilities do for customer care, for innovation to gain insight. The benefits of creating a community on your website are you will see reduced calls and emails coming into your contact centers as one social consumer answers another social consumer's questions. You'll get better insight. We're seeing better R&D spend, better product development spend as a result. You will generate more revenue. People that hang out around your brand build greater brand affinity and they spend more. And the, the user generated content that a community accumulates increases search engine optimization because there's more stuff for Google to target. It'll increase traffic to your website. There's a bunch of benefits. I encourage you make plans to get a community on your website. Number four, I would encourage you to innovate. We're really excited about some of the capabilities we introduced just this past summer around our CX cloud platform. In particular, the ability to add custom business objects and to build CX specific applications, maybe around business processes that are unique to your business. Maybe it's return material authorization or customer segmentation or warranty records or uh, product registration. The CX platform allows you just with drag and drop to extend our data schema and then surface those data elements in the workspace designer, in analytics, and they are primary data elements that allow you to extend the solution very, very easily without customization. That, and these, these co configurations then persist through future software upgrades. So it's a, it's an, um, it's, the engineering team did a fabulous job. That, those capabilities, most of them become generally available in November, uh, if not previously. So they're all there and ready to go. I would encourage you, pick an experience in your organization that could benefit from a, some additional workflow and implement it. The result will be better experiences for your consumers and lower costs. So number six, the last one. Pull the plug on your legacy agent desktop. You know the pain. I'm out, I, I visit with you. Many of you are running legacy Siebel, Clarify, Vantive, Remedy systems on life support. And you just need to pull the plug. The, we've seen this over and over again. As we've replaced these systems for many of our multinational clients, um, what happens? Agent productivity goes up. Training costs go down. Alternative agent strategies like work at home agents or outsourced agents become easier. Outsourced relationships become more accountable. And new workflows are possible that are not possible. Uh, I sometimes say that the beautiful thing about Siebel is anything's possible um, with infinite time and infinite money. <laughs> 